in part four we are going to prepare and deploy the microservice so um the first step is uh, what microservice so the microservice is going to be a sample microservice application i created uh, as a part uh, of the abp series it has a few services called administration identity sas and i also created a new service so if you want to know how to create a microservice with abp um, this is a good um, way to learn and the repo is here and it's called task and if you look had that I already made a check-in and then created a um, github action what does this do uh, this github action runs on uh, branch push and pull request I think you don't need for pull request but um, um, yeah I just created it for pull request as well and then it just runs these steps um, I created a template for you to uh, copy and paste uh, here is the docker um, sorry the github action template uh, which uses ubuntu machines to run and then uses the docker uh, login so i'm using the secrets which are repository secrets so if you go to um, settings and then uh, secrets and actions you will see i have a bunch of repository secrets and come here and add your own secrets um, i have added uh, the username and password of the registry we created uh, in the last video and um, and i have used that uh, secret in our um, github action and how do you do that you just provide um provide it this way you just provide a double parenthesis with the dollar sign and then it gets it from the repository secrets and this is an open source uh, docker login action um i just copied and used and then once you logged in with the docker then you can do a few things like pushing to the custom registry so here for each and every docker image there is three actions happening so the first one is building the docker image um so i have a gateway and then the gateway has a docker image and i'm building it and then tagging it as gateway.dev or gateway colon dev and then i'm tagging the gateway as a registry image and i'm pushing the registry image and i'm going i'm I'm repeating that uh, for all the Docker images available, including the DB migrator. If you want the sample, as I mentioned before, you can go to the GitHub workflow, Docker images, you will see that the doc, uh, the registry we created called registry.youtube.entosbush.com, which is here, registry editor. So this is the uh, host we provided for our registry. Um, and that is the registry we are using. Um, that is the registry uh, we are using here. And once uh, you ran it, you will see something like this. So the build is successful. It ran for eight minutes and you can see that the um, Docker login was successful. And then the build uh, for Docker image was happening and then the uh, docker tag happened and then the docker push also succeeded to the registry we created just it will take some time uh, for me it took eight minutes depending on how many services you have it might take might finish long or it might take longer than eight minutes so um and you might not even use uh, github action so you you would use something else like um, i don't know azure pipeline but the the main takeaway is that you should log into the registry um, somehow. I'm using a GitHub action to log in and then build the registry and then push the image to the registry. That's it. Once you did that, we are ready for deployment. Um, I actually made an um, article and a YouTube video on how to do that. I think it's here, uh, Docker and CI CD. So you can come and check out this micro series. Uh, and then you will, in part 10, in part 10, I actually went and then created this um, Docker support, adding how to add Docker support and how to do and then create the um, um, CI CD. So you can come and watch this video and to know more. So once you have the um, CI CD running and once you have the registry um, image available, sorry, the image pushed to the registry, 
we can start creating Docker Compose. So let's create a Compose for migration. This migration image has a CLI application, which kind of looks for this connection string and then does the migration for our microservice. I will first go to Protainer, add a stack called migration, and just copy this and then paste here. You have to uh, check, um, maybe I will just keep the services name as stack stack name. So, um, okay, here is a problem. This is a wrong um, image. It should be dot um youtube because um that's what we are using i think okay i updated here i forgot to update here i will update the blog post um yeah once you have that this should work um if you are new uh, to using underscore underscore it doesn't matter you if you use a colon or underscore underscore both works uh, in uh, the dotnet environment variables um and you can see the connection string i have passed id and then the postgres password and then the local um uh, network ip and these are the database uh, names so when i run uh, if the connection strings are available and the database is found in this port it should uh, create the databases and how do i check i am running a protainer sorry i'm running an adminer uh in in the postgres as well so that's also running as a service here so um i can log into the database like that and now i can see that in, in the database there is nothing so when we do and run our migrations we, sh we should see it uh, okay okay there is no database and i'm going to run the db migrator and then see what to db migrator see it's running and then you can see all the database okay the migration is complete if i come back here and refresh i have four databases perfect and you can actually even go and then see the inside the identity service and then select the user you will see that mean user seeded that means the seeding also worked perfectly fine and if you want to see the clients the identity server clients are yes the identity server clients are available as well so all the seeding ran well but we don't want to run the uh, db migrator again and again but if you look at it it will always uh, run again and again what i would do is i will scale down to zero so that there is nothing running so if you can you see everything is complete there is nothing running we can run the db migrator once if you want to run the migration all but other times you don't have to do it because otherwise it will keep trying to migrate the application okay now the migration is done what else is that to do now we have to actually deploy the actual application actual application is here this is a very big docker compose docker compose has few services these are identity service sorry this is the identity server and then the gateway and along with the gateway i also have all the services um available as uh, as a service so the first thing is identity server identity server this is the image it's using the traffic public network these are all the environment variables um can use and this is the deployment parameter for traffic as you can see we are using the identity service name and then the identity service is going to use the url id.taski.youtube.entus.com yeah i know it's a big uh, url but um if you are using your domain you just replace youtube.entusubash with your domain and then that's it it will work and it's the same for registry uh, i'm using the um, deployment labels and these are the environment variables um yeah i'm replacing the um, reverse proxy destination in the environment uh you can also run the production config but i kind of like to do, to do it this way and for administration service i am not exposing the service outside i'm actually just exposing it to the host and then i'm exposing to the port uh 7000 so the published port is the port which is exposed to the host target post is a uh, target port is the port inside the container so uh the port 7001 is mapped to 80 inside the container same for the identity server 7002 is mapped to the 80 uh, for sas 7003 is mapped to 80 7004 is mapped to 80 so this way all the services are mapped um the configurations are not accurate because uh, you have to come and uh, allow the cross origins here uh, for a lot of other urls so i'm not going to properly configure this is about just running it um i'm not going to sit and configure each and every um entry to make it 
run. So right now I'm just going to show how to run the services and then show that it actually runs by you know, going to identity server and then showing how the gateway works so that you can see actually the gateway works by redirecting the URL to this port. Okay, now let's go to Portainer. Yeah, so we have our DB migrator here. I'll create a tag called Dusky and copy the entire thing, paste it here, and let's run it and see what happens. Okay, run. You come and open the services. Yes, it's starting. Everything is starting. So four of them are running. Two of them are start. Now all of them are running. So the first one to check is the identity server. So the identity server URL is here. This is the identity server URL ID .task I will copy this and then see what happens. Yes, the identity server works. And I log in. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, I think uh, it doesn't work because we didn't do the um, Chrome secure cookie. So yeah, but uh, as you can see, the login page appears, so it works. Um, and for gateway, this is the gateway URL. Copy it and yes. So uh, the administration service is also available. So the task key is not perfectly ready to be deployed uh, for production because we have to prepare it uh, with um, the secure cookie auth. I think I made an article regarding that. Um, mm, yeah, so this article which goes through on how to prepare your thing, you have to add the same site cookie collection extension and then um, and I'm missing the steps why we were not able to log in. Um, I think there is also a couple of other steps when there is a reverse proxy um, uh, in front of uh, your application. If you want to cover all those scenarios, please comment in the um, video. Uh, if I have time, I will try to fix all those scenarios and then try to properly deploy the um, PASCII microservice application. So that's out of the scope. I just want to show how you can deploy the Docker containers in a simple way and then um, make it work. So now I can go back to the um, um, SSH, uh, sorry, um, the server, and um, you can do hedge top and then see since now we have deployed, I don't know how many containers, uh, you can click and then see services. We have deployed we have deployed 17 containers so um even after deploying 17 containers we only consumed 1.5 five to gigs and then our cpu seems to be doing fine uh, most of the time there is very little load this is a perfect setup if you have a uh, very um low traffic website or uh, as a development server like what i have so if i want to quickly test out a bunch of containers um i usually just run one machine and then uh, run them this is a very cheap way to run your containers to test them out this is definitely not a production setup uh, but uh, the, but if you want to quickly and cheaply run your containers for your uh, local or your private stuff um, without too much effort, um, this is the best way to get it up and running quickly. Um, yeah, that's the end of the series. Um, I hope you liked it. Um, if you have any feedback, please let me know. Um, I would see you in another video. Bye-bye.